If you enjoy this video, please consider giving a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you have any ideas for future videos, share them in the comments section below. So as you listen to me, you can begin to drift comfortably asleep. And while you drift comfortably asleep, you can allow yourself to get comfortable and allow your eyes to close. And I don't know whether you'll drift off to sleep faster with the words that I use, with the sound of my voice, or perhaps with the spaces between my words. you can have a sense of being out bird watching one day. Of being in a little shed, a little bird watching shack, with some binoculars gazing out from this quiet spot. And you're gazing out through some woodland and over an, a large valley gazing out through woodland and over a large valley. And you can see different birds in the nearby bits of woodland. But you can also see a large circling bird of prey in the distance in the valley. And you can see it so gracefully circling seeming to use almost no effort, and you look through binoculars at that graceful bird of prey, and you have that unusual experience where when you watch that through binoculars, it's almost like you shut off from the reality around you and awareness of the shack and awareness of everything else. It's almost like you're just very near to the bird, almost flying with them. And while you watch that bird fly so gracefully and effortlessly, you begin to have a sense of thinking what it must be like to be able to fly like that. To be able to just drift around in the sky, rise up on warm air currents, circle around. To have the excellent vision of that bird. To see so clearly and so far. And you can find yourself imagining that so strongly that all of a sudden you become the bird. Seeing through the bird's eyes, flying, drifting, soaring high in the sky, feeling weightlessness, floating. Just circling around, seeing woodland in the distance, seeing the vast expanse of the valley, the green grass, noticing bits of movement jump out at you as creatures scurry around on the ground. Seeing the way the tops of the trees vibrate in the breeze. And just feeling that sense of calmness, of peace and simplicity 
at just flying and floating so gracefully, with so little effort. And then while you continue to fly gracefully, you start exploring and it's as if somehow you've taken over this bird. And a part of you is thinking, am I still in a shack watching the bird and somehow I've drifted into a daydream? Or was I watching the bird so intensely that I got into the bird's psyche, somehow managed to get into the bird's mind? And either way, you go with the experience. And you notice this fast flowing river. And you decide to soar down, fly over that water. And you take some time to soar down, fly over the water, going from the direction the water's going. As it cascades down through different waterfalls, around rocks, through rapids, and you fly just above the water, feeling the spray from the water, smelling the water, hearing the water as it roars in rapids, and then goes almost silent in calm areas. And you notice if you get just the right point above the water, you can feel that you're flying on a cushion of air between the water and your wings. And so you fly on that cushion of air and glide and float and follow that river all the way down to a lake. And as you reach the beginning of the lake, you soar up into the air and circle around again and think of the fun you're having as a bird flying, taking all this in. You feel a sense of elegance. and grace, and you continue exploring, and you're now in an area you've never been before. As a bird watcher you've been and watched birds, you've even been down and walked through the valley, you've even walked and seen some of that river and the lake. But now you seem to have flown over an area you've never been before. An area of woodland. Only you notice something about this woodland. Your eyesight is so good that you notice subtleties. And you notice that some of the trees are slightly higher up than others and that there's a certain pattern to these trees. And intuitively, something tells your mind that it's worth going down there and investigating. So you fly down, and you're too big to fit through the treetops of this area of woodland. So you circle round and explore and conclude that you're going to have to land at the beginning of the woodland. You don't know how well a bird of prey is going to be able to walk from the beginning of the woodland all the way into the woods. 
but you don't see an alternative, so you fly round to land at the beginning of the woodland. And as you come into land, you bring your wings back, you open them wide, slowing you right down, catching as much wind as possible, catching as much of that air as possible. And you put your feet out in front of you. And you have an odd experience that just as your feet touch the ground, you become yourself again. And yet, here you are, stood before this area of woodland. And you're still trying to work out whether this is a dream, whether you've somehow gazed at that bird so intensely that you're now dreaming and having this experience, and yet it feels very real and undreamlike. And you think, well, if it was just a dream, wouldn't I be able to just wake up by deciding to wake up? And yet it feels very real, like it's not something you can just wake up from. And it's not something that particularly bothers you, it's just a curiosity. And so you walk into the woods, listening to the footsteps listening to the different sounds in the woods, noticing how the light changes as you walk into the woods. And the woods are quite dense and you have to push through and work your way through. And as you push and work your way through the woods, You notice there's some areas that seem to be a bit higher, areas that seem to be a bit lower, like the woods have built on top of something. But you don't know what, and you keep pushing and pushing, until eventually there's an area that's a little bit clearer. And you notice that the woods have overgrown over some kind of old building. And as you walk around and explore, you find that it seems to have grown over lots of old buildings. And you keep walking and exploring and all you keep finding is more and more buildings. Like this is a huge area of buildings. And then you find a bit that just looks like a normal bit of land. Perhaps a normal outcrop of rock. And you decide to go and explore it and you scratch through the plants that have covered it over. And you notice it's a wall of a building that's partially collapsed, and you follow it and see where this wall leads. It seems like you've found some kind of building that would have been near the centre of this lost city. And then as you keep exploring, you notice an indentation in the ground. And you notice that this is where an entrance must have once been. And so you start clearing this entrance space and you find 
that just behind a bit of rubble is a tunnel heading downwards in some steps. And so you walk into the tunnel. And as you do, somehow, oddly, your eyes adapt to be able to see in this tunnel. Like somehow you've got some abilities of the wild animals in this area. And you don't try to understand it. Because you're too busy thinking it benefits what you want to achieve. You want to explore this area. And so you head down deeper into this building. And quite a way down, you find a stone slab that you think is probably in front of an entrance to something. And you start pushing around on the stone slab and around the wall around the stone slab. And then somehow, you just take a step and the slab moves aside. And it grinds and slides aside as you walk through. And you find yourself in a vast chamber. And within this vast chamber, you notice that there are scrolls all around the walls in diamond shaped spaces. And that there's got to be tens of thousands of scrolls around the walls. Perhaps like some lost civilization library. And you go and carefully manage to open one of the scrolls. And it's in a language you don't understand. And so you put it back. And you open another one and it's in the same language that you don't understand. And so you put it back. But you suspect there is so much wisdom contained within these scrolls. And you see, right in the middle of the room, is a pedestal with an open scroll. And the scrolls being held open with a golden clasp at the top and the bottom. And you stand in front of that scroll. You stand near the pedestal. And you assume, I'm just not going to be able to read this one either. And you gaze at that scroll. And everything on it begins to change. Almost like a mist passing across the scroll. And like the writing is rewriting itself. And the scroll ends up being able to be read. It ends up readable. And so you look and start reading this scroll. And realising it's teaching you some inner wisdom. It's teaching you about something. It'll transform your life. And so you read that with fascination, with wonder. Only vaguely aware of the impact it's going to have positively on you. And you read that this one also includes instructions. Saying that all the scrolls can be read when held on this pedestal by this golden clasp and so you go and get another scroll you place that on the pedestal you clasp it into place and you watch as the writing transforms almost like a little mist and a movement and a changing of the text to become readable and you read that one and realise it's full of knowledge you never would have known. 
ancient knowledge, ancient wisdom. And you then get another scroll, putting that one back. And notice that one also contains ancient wisdom. And you wonder how long it would take to work your way through the thousands of scrolls full of ancient wisdom in this place. And you read another scroll and another scroll, taking in and learning more ancient wisdom, learning on an instinctive level. Learning that with a certain focus, you can become the animals, you can join the spirit of the animals, and somehow you'd stumbled across that focus, and by stumbling across that focus allowed you to stumble across this knowledge. And you read and learn and find this knowledge fascinating. And you realise it would take too long to read and learn all this knowledge right now. You decide to continue exploring. And so you put the original scroll back in place on the pedestal and make sure all other scrolls are put away and you explore deeper and deeper into this space. And as you explore, so you discover a giant underground lake. And on that lake is a boat. And this lake is totally still. And you feel it's so still, it's almost unnaturally still. But then there's no breeze down here. And you get into the boat, and you row that boat to the other side of the lake, and get out of the boat. And you can now see that the lake has ripples. And you wonder how much those ripples will die down by the time you pass across that lake as you return. And you carry on exploring, wondering who created this whole underground space. Where underneath the city there's a vast lake. And why did they create it? And you see some statues. And you see giant pearls and crystals in the walls. And you notice how they appear to be glowing. As if maybe there's tubes of light coming in from above, lighting up the back of the pearls and crystals. And you find a chamber. And on a shelf in that chamber is the most elegant item of clothing you've ever seen. So beautifully woven. Something handcrafted that you know would have taken years to make. And you know this shows the amount of skill these people had. Even though you don't know who these people are. And then you see a puzzle on the wall. 
and you know there's no further to go in this chamber. But you think it's curious having a puzzle, so you try and solve the puzzle. And after a while of moving things around, trying to work things out, suddenly you get the puzzle. Something clicks inside you that makes it make sense. And then a secret door opens. You walk through that secret door, going deeper and deeper into this building. And you see a room so large that you can't see the other side of it. You can't see the side on the left or the side on the right. You don't know how the ceiling is being held up in a room this large. And you walk into the room. And after a very, very long time of walking in a straight line, so that you don't get lost, just following the markings on the ground, you find yourself at another pedestal. Only on this pedestal is a bit confusing. You see a perfectly polished black pebble. And so you pick up that perfectly polished black pebble. You feel it in your fingers. You run it through your fingers. Feel the smoothness of that pebble. You then see a note next to the pebble that says, take me. And then you turn the note over. And it says, put me in your shoe and lose me when the time is right. And you think this is unusual. But you take the pebble. You slide it into the side of your shoe. Feeling it's a bit uncomfortable, but you slide it into the side of your shoe. You don't know why you followed the instructions. But you feel these people must have wisdom and a reason. And you're curious what that reason might be. And you know the only way to discover the reason is to follow along. So you put that pebble in your shoe. And you find your way with a bit of a limp initially, out of that room. You start finding your way back through the building. After a while, you habituate to that pebble in your shoe. And you stop noticing the pebble in your shoe, but you know it's still there, and you know if you draw attention to it, you notice it again. And you continue to find your way out, and then find your way into the woods. And then you work your way through the woods, back the way you came. And when you exit the woods, you don't know how far it is to get back to where you came from. You know you're supposed to be bird watching, but you don't know how to get back to where you're bird watching. And then you feel this compulsion to jump. And you jump up in the air and instantly seem to have wings, and you do a large flap and launch yourself higher into the air. And you notice you're that bird again. And you fly and you catch an updraft of warm air. And you spiral around and circle up into the air. And you don't give it any real thought. You just seem to fly and know your way back. 
to where you were first seen as a bird. And you fly to that location and are circling around in that location just as you were as a bird initially. And next minute you feel a slight curious feeling and realize you're looking through some binoculars at the bird. You wonder, was that all a dream? What was that all about? And then you look down and notice you have a pebble in your shoe and realize it wasn't a dream. Something happened, some experience. And you don't know what it all means, but you decide to follow those instructions of keeping that pebble in your shoe until such time as it just naturally is time to lose the pebble. And so that's what you decide to do. And you find your way all the way back home with a sense of accomplishment, of achievement, of learning, where you can drift comfortably and relax asleep.